Welcome to 8 Minute Crimes, where we put out multiple videos each week, consisting of interrogations, case breakdowns, and updates. If that is your sort of thing, we would love to have you as a subscriber. This is the confession of Liang Zhao, husband of Ming Ming Chen, and father of five-year-old Ashley Zhao. Liang walks detectives through the day that their five-year-old was murdered by his wife. This is a tough one to watch, so be advised. What happened yesterday morning? Okay, yesterday morning, um, we got up, we prepped JoJo for school. I took JoJo to school. I came back. When I came back, uh, my wife was very angry at Ashley because she peed on her diaper and she pooped on her diaper. I know this doesn't sound like a big deal, but she's five years old and she's not behind hiding train like ever. And, um, I'll explain that a little later. Uh, but so that got my wife angry and, you know, said a few things like, you know, you're, you're just old, you know, you're five years old, you still don't know how to go potty and poop. And, and uh, well, she had, my wife was in the room and she was outside in the living room. And after she pooped and potty in a diaper, you know, my wife knows that she had issues with potty training, so she was going to fine, but then she took off her diaper and, uh, and again. So that got my wife angry. And uh, so, you know, when you're five years old, you know, you still don't know how to move the potty. And my wife got angry and uh, hit her head on the carpet, you know, two times. And initially she was breathing. She was still breathing then. And did you did you watch? Did you see your wife do it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was home at that time. What time was it? Oh. Uh, usually yeah, after I drop off at nine nine ish. I, I I can't say approximately because I you know I, I don't work at a time home. You know my wife is banging Ashley sat on a carpet at nine fifteen. Nine ish nine nine fifteen I guess. Okay. And yeah. so right then she wasn't breathing? No, no, she was breathing. Okay. She was breathing and you know, uh I was like, okay. So she's still breathing, she's okay. Uh, was there any blood or anything? No. There's just blood. Okay. Was she walking? I mean No, she wasn't walking. She was breathing but she was lying down. And I thought she was gonna come out of it in a little bit, you know? So She stopped, but I didn't realize she stopped. I thought she was breathing normally now because she was uh, gasping, like, like it was, it was, I can't really remember or recall exactly what, but it was a lot heavier than normal. Um, so it sounded like a snore almost. Okay. So at that point she stopped, I thought, okay, so she's breathing normally now. So didn't really pay attention to it. And then a little later, I uh, went to, you know, hold her and, just didn't feel right. And I checked her heart and stopped beating. So I started panicking and I tried to do CPR on her, you know, try to breathe, try to breathe in her mouth and give her chest compressions. I don't exactly know how long I did that for. I know I did it for a pretty not a long time, maybe 15 minutes to a half an hour or something like that. And that's when we realized she's gone. Like I tried and you know, I told my wife so kind of, you know, I think if I just realized it sooner that, you know, when she stopped breathing that snore sound, that she, her heart stopped bleeding, I mean, her, start, uh, her heart stopped breathing at that, uh, her heart stopped beating at that time, maybe I could have stopped the pressure then that would have saved her or something. But, I don't know. I know that I didn't start directly right after because I thought she was breathing only then. When she was on the floor, you thought she was breathing? Yeah. But she wasn't doing that snoring sound anymore. I thought she was breathing normally. I thought she was going to come out of it in like a, you know, a little bit. How long, how long did she lay on the floor after? After her head hitting the carpet? Yeah. Um, two, three minutes. Uh, making that sound. Uh, no, it was much longer than that. We actually uh, took her to the bathroom uh, because she was vomiting. 
we took her to the bathroom and vomit, and she vomited. So we vomited in the toilet, and then she got vomit all over, so we took her and rinsed her off in the bath, take her out. So she must have been breathing like that for about a good five minutes at least. Okay. At least. Because she was like, the screen stuff came out. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's like greenish, like, like light greenish tint. Out of her vomit? Yeah. So we took her to the bathroom and we thought maybe get rid of that. And then she got it all over herself. So we rinsed her off, took her to um, the living room to dress her. And she was still breathing like that for a little while. So overall, probably five. Were her eyes open? Were her, or the, she was, was she responding? Yeah, she was like, like you know. Um, Overall, she, after she hit the carpet, she was probably for another five to ten minutes. You know, considering that, you know, took her to the bathroom, uh, had vomit on her, rinsed her off, then put clothes on her, and then let her sit there for a while, and then I noticed that she started, you know, she was breathing very really late again. So, when I, uh, when I thought she was breathing regularly, and then uh, checked her, and then I realized that she was, her, stop, her heart stopped, stop. and that's when I started doing compressions. I did for a while, and then we started um, panicking. We didn't know what to do. Um, first thing that came to my mind was, I'm going to lose JoJo, and my family's going to fall apart. Who's JoJo? My older daughter. My oldest daughter? Yeah. Did at any time did JoJo's at school? You or your wife? tell each other to call 911? I told her to go pick up JoJo and I was going to stay here and call 911. Why would you pick JoJo up? Huh? Why would you pick JoJo up? I was going to tell her to go pick JoJo up and I was going to call 911. Why? It wasn't, school wasn't over. I thought it was, right? It wasn't early, right? No. Well, this is 9.15 in the morning? Yeah. Okay. Does she not go full? No, no, she goes full day. I was, I was going to tell my wife to go pick her up, so I was going to call down and tell her that, that, you know, it was an accident, so my wife wouldn't be there. So what happened? Um, you know, we talked about it. And talked about what? She said that, you know, we're both afraid. We're both afraid of what's going to happen if we call. Okay. I wanted to set her away so that, you know, I'll be there. If someone gets in trouble, it'll be me, and she'll be okay. And I kind of wish it didn't happen this way, not both of us are in really big trouble. But yeah, I wanted to send her away and, you know, call the police. But then, you know, she... Both of us were afraid of what was going to happen. If we did, we were afraid of going to lose our daughter, we were going to lose our family, uh, the restaurant, the house that we're getting, everything, everything in our lives that you know that we worked so hard for for the past six years. This was going to be gone. Okay. So that fear uh, led us to you know like it's an accident. So. Okay, so what happened? I mean, she's lying there, she's not breathing. Uh, well, what happened then? We, we couldn't decide what to do, and, you know, after a while we decided, uh, both of us, I don't know exactly who came up with what, but, you know, we should bring her to the restaurant so JoJo can see her. So JoJo, when you guys ask her, you know, like, that was maybe that wasn't a good idea, but that was not thinking clearly at the time. So, you know, bring her to the restaurant so JoJo can see her so that when we call, JoJo can say, oh, she was here at the restaurant and she left the back door at the restaurant instead of, you know, at the house. She accidentally got killed. So, where were you gonna where were you gonna put her at the restaurant so JoJo could see her? And, you know, at the room that she was normally in, uh, she sleeps in there. So um, JoJo was 
see that she's sleeping there and to verify it and you know if she's sick so and even if you ask her to take a polygraph I don't know if you could ask a six year old to take a polygraph but a six year old wouldn't lie like that and so we we didn't want Joe to lie so we want Joe to see Ashley there. Okay. So you get you take Ashley to the restaurant. How, how do you get Ashley from the apartment to the restaurant? Put her in the car seat. Did you carry her out to the car? Yeah. Did she have her jacket on? Yes. Okay. What, what, what color is your car? Uh, it's a rental car. It's like black or dark gray. Okay. So you drove that yeah. to the to the store. Was there a, a gentleman looking on the roof? Yes. Okay. You, your daughter, did you carry her in? Yes. Okay. Yes. They saw me. Okay. Yeah. And there was two guys on the roof, mm -hmm. uh, working on the roof or something like that. Mm -hmm. And we brought her inside and we just laid her there. And um, we just continued our work. The plan was for Joshua to come home and see her there to verify that she's there. And then I would hide her up in, on top of the walk in freezer. And then when we called the police at night, Jojo could verify that she was there. No. Did you um, did you guys also make some noise when we're going out the back door? Where because JoJo said she thought she heard a noise and her sister might have went out the back door. No, no, that JoJo she's not a liar, but she's six, uh -huh. and okay. when you lean her towards something, okay. that's where she goes. And, and she's not a liar. She doesn't lie to people, oh, yeah. but but she is six. When you, leave, when, you, when you point her at a direction, that's where she's going to go. Well, where was JoJo? Okay, so how long did you leave Ashley Lane in the bed? Uh, I got the restaurant at 10 till about 7, 6 or 7. Okay. 6 or 7, she was, she was lying there, JoJo saw her, you know. And she said she can't tell the difference between someone that's no longer breathing and someone sleeping. And what happened? And then I moved her, uh, you know, to the walk-in freezer, uh, put her in that uh, plastic container, the salt, so that she wouldn't stink. What kind of container was it? That was plastic, uh, like uh, uh, those bus, uh, bus, uh, busting containers for like restaurants. And uh, that's that's when we were gonna call the police, and we were hoping that you know the police would come here and look and ask us, oh, we didn't expect this. We didn't know the, the procedure exactly what's going on. You know, we didn't know that I was gonna come down here, take a polygraph. Uh, I was gonna be asked so much questions. So there's gonna be so many people involved. If we knew that there was gonna be like a hundred people searching for maybe even more, I don't even know. I I am so sorry. What what were your plans to do after after maybe we quit looking for her? Whatever what, what were you gonna do? We don't really know. Uh, there was three things: if I burn burn it, bury it, uh, or throw it in the ocean. Those are the only three things that we can think of, and we know that. I think that's probably one of the reasons. You know, that another the fact that there's so many reasons why I told Randy what I told Randy. But one of the reasons is Randy mentioned it and I know, I mean, you know, what I've been telling me I know is if if let's say that I went through with this and I didn't get caught, I'm gonna be looking over my shoulder for I don't know how long. You know? Because there's a dead body there. You know, that, that I have to eventually get rid of. And if you put it in the ocean, the tides can wash it back. If you bury it, while well, animals can get at it, someone can find it. If you burn it, there's a chance that someone's going to see you because it's going to be a big flame. You're not going to do it during the day, and you're going to be doing it during the night. So when you're burning a big flame at night, someone's going to see you. We, we thought about all of this. And honestly, we 
we weren't really too sure on what to do after that. You you came back to the this morning. Yeah. To light candles and a little incense. Yes. What was that for? Uh, at appearance, it was for you know for for you guys to hope that Ashley would be found, but you know, but really, I was praying that this would be resolved so that we would keep our family together. I was praying constantly, my wife she was praying that this could be resolved and our family can stay together. Was everybody at the store when you put her in the, the salt tent? You mean everybody like myself, my wife, my daughter? Wife yes. And your daughter? Yes, yes. Where was your daughter? My wife took my daughter to a friend and, uh, because she's teething, so she told me to go to my church and we're going to eat. Her first tooth is about to come out. And that's when I, you know, moved Ashley up there. Did you and her wife both agree on, 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 on putting her there in that container? We talked about places, and I said this is probably the best place to do it. You know, um, it's well ventilated, I'm going to put salt in it. You're not going to be worried about temperature because it's cooler up there. And it's you know, up above where the panels are, right? Yes. Did you take, move panel? did you take panel off? That was already off. We, we keep stuff up there. There's like our wedding pictures and everything. Okay. Yeah. We keep a lot of stuff up there. It's like extra storage. So it's extra storage. Would you, so then how did you get up her ladder? Yeah. The ladder, you carried her up? Yes. And, and put, put her body up there? Yes. Okay. Then what you guys do, close, close the business for the night? No, we called. You we called, called please. Jackson? Yes. But you did this, what time did you say you put her in there? You thought? Uh, six something to seven, like six thirty to seven. And then you called us like at quarter or eight, or quarter or nine, I think. Yeah, so whatever is the time that's recorded, yeah. Do you want me to tell you the rest? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, uh, this is being recorded, right? Yes. Okay. My wife, she's not a bad person. She's not. She's not. That's, I mean, you know, I married her. I, mean, I wouldn't marry her if she was physically abusive at the beginning. Um, you can see my daughter, my Jojo, she's six years old. We took care of both of us for six years. Not one time did my wife like physically abuse her, you know, out of anger or anything like that. You know, we, we spanked her, you know. Right. Yeah. Correct. Or yeah, yeah, she did something wrong. Yeah, but nothing like, you know, oh, the bruises on her, you know, all over the place that you found on Ashley. My wife is a good person. I, I know it's very hard to believe, you know, seeing Ashley, but look at JoJo. Look at JoJo, you know, she's a good, good person. She's a good mother. She just has problems. Uh, she has problems with them, actually, because uh, when we got her, when she was born, we didn't raise her. My mom raised her. Okay. For four years, and then uh, we got her back in the book, so she's five. We raised, I only saw my daughter for a year. You know, she's five, so only one thing in her life. More or less. I saw her once when she was like one and a half or about a month or two. But um, both of us, we know my wife had this problem. In the beginning, when she started reacting like this, actually, not initially, not when she first came down, she was fine. I'll, I'll explain that too. But when she first started being like this, to actually, I I try to step in and stop it. When did when did it start? Uh, when my mom started telling my wife that she was doing it wrong, she was raising Ashley wrong. Okay, how long ago was that? Uh, about one month after Ashley came here, my mom came here to visit. We told her to stay away because we know my mom knows that my wife have issues with her and you know, some time with Ashley to adjust. 
you know, we talked about this constantly, and that's why it's very fresh in my mind. But that's when it started, and when it started, was not that big of a deal. But then my mom, every which way, I know I, I sound like I'm placing blame, but uh, I'm just telling you what happened. Okay. I know I sound like I'm placing blame, but you know, my wife's condition. But I'm just telling you what happened. You know, that's at that one time she came down, she visited my wife, and I said, go, oh, that's fine. And she was a little angered by that. She was a little pissed off about it. But then my wife would tell my aunt and my grandmother to tell my wife the same thing. You know, my mom would do that and tell me to go to constantly check up on Ashley, make sure that she's okay, stuff like that. And it would go on forever. It was up to a point where we had to tell my mom, stop calling, stop calling us. You know, don't send people here anymore. Tell, tell grandma, stop coming here. Because we've been here for six years. First couple of years, my grandma almost never comes. Nobody comes to visit us. My mom never calls me, ever. Like, you can check my phone records. Pick up as much phone records as you like. I don't talk a lot with my mom. But then, when Ashley got here, you know, constantly calling, going, you know, you're doing this wrong, stuff like that, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that kind of got to my wife because, you know, it's your own daughter, and then there's your mother in law telling you that you're not doing it right, you're not doing it what you're supposed to do. That's one thing. And another thing is that you look at your own daughter and she's, you got her, she's four, she can't, she's not potty trained, she doesn't know her last name, she doesn't know if she's a boy or a girl. I know you can't verify that, but if you want, I can tell you, you can put me back on the machine and I can tell you that I'm telling you the truth when I'm telling you these things. You can put me back on the machine and I can tell you that when I'm telling you these things that she doesn't, she's not potty trained, she doesn't know her last name, and she doesn't know if she was a boy or a girl when we got her when she was four. And the list goes on and on with these things. And uh, I mean, she knows she's a boy or girl now because we taught her and we taught her her last name. But initially when we got her, she did it. And that combined with the fact that my mom keeps telling my wife, you know, she's doing it wrong. And then we see how Ashley was actually raised. The combination of two just, just made my wife really angry. And the more my wife see Ashley being that way, you know, not be able to potty train and just get her angry and I just I tell my wife just stop, you know, just let it be. And both myself and my wife, we knew that something like this would happen eventually if Ashley wasn't sent away. But we could have sent her my mom because my mom will place her like this again. So the plan was to send her to my wife's mom in China and eventually I was just hoping that you know, it would come to this before we sent her away. And we will let we will give my wife some time to balance out. Well why uh, why did your why did you give her to your mom anyway? She was my mom. She was No, I mean why didn't you raise Ashley yourself? Oh, uh I was running a restaurant. I couldn't really take care of everything, so I naturally could trust my mom, you know, to raise my daughter. What? And uh, initially I told her to come down, I told her to bring it down, so bring Ashley down so that I could see her, I could see her grow up, and I could develop a relationship with her, but my mom refused for so long, you know, she you know, kept telling her, telling her, kept calling her, and you know, she gave it a try when Ashley was about one and a half. That's when I saw her one and a half, and then, you know, she said she could live with me. So that's when she took Ashley away, and that's when I saw her again at four. How long has she been down there since she was four? Five years. She's five now. She just turned five. So when, long ago. when did the abuse start with your wife and Ashley? About, about a little bit after a month after she arrived. In the beginning, it was not that bad. It was like discipline, you know, trying to correct her, you know, like you got a potty in the toilet, you know, stuff like that, minor stuff. And, and the thing with Ashley was that 
That way, when she talked to us, she she wouldn't lie to us about what she saw or yes. at least how she perceived it. Yes. Is there anything else you would like to ask? Then I'll, I'll answer everything. I, why didn't you ever report the abuse to law enforcement? I was worried. I was scared. Scared that I was going to take my wife away. Well, how how bad? I mean, what kind of abuse are we talking? It's not like initially so bad. If it was initially so bad, I would probably report it. But just you know, it worked. Escalated. And, yeah, and then at that point, I was like, she got so much bruises on her. I can't call it in anymore. Well, would she twist her arm? Would she kick her? Would she hit her? How, yeah. how, what what happened? Um, pretty much all of it, you know, twist her arm, uh, kick her, hit her. But never touched JoJo? No, not once. And, and not like, you know, oh, she just sees her and just kisses her off, and, you know, push her down the stairs or something. It's always when, when Ashley does something and it, that, that's her trigger, you know. My my mom tells my wife that she's raising kids wrong, and then every single time Ashley does something that reminds my wife of what my mom said, like you know her doing something not a five year old should do, that's pretty much trigger. It's like, you know, like um, Ashley would. It, it, it's weird. She would go like this. I'll show you. Okay, I, I I don't have anyone. <laughs>
you know, no, or she's not no, aware of it. Yeah, we didn't think her doctor we were afraid because the doctor would see that. You know, to see that, you know, she's bruised all over her body. And she had that many bruises on her. Yes. So this, I mean, it, it was a daily thing then? Not daily. Not daily. A couple of times a week. Not every single day. Uh, because believe it or not, my wife does try to control herself. She did it quite a bit daily. But there, there was periods where she tried to control herself a lot. And it would be like weeks uh, before, you know. There would be periods, weeks, literally weeks. Did you ever wife, tell her she needs to knock it off? I, I, I try that. She, she needs to stop? I try that. And she knows. And she knows she needs to stop. And I tried. But in the beginning, uh, it seems like the more I try to, it depends on the situation. Like if she's at that situ that time where she's feeling that anger, and I tell her to stop, she gets even more angry. So, this time, um, yesterday morning, this last time when she did it, what, what did your wife do after after she hit her head on, hit her head on the floor? Uh, she usually leaves, and then I go take care of her. But then, you know, as I mentioned, you know, Did she the, leave this time. Not like leave her apartment, but leave the living room. Left the room. What would she go do? I don't know. I can see. I was trying to get actually. She probably went into the bedroom or the bathroom. But then I started noticing that she was going on the screen stuff. So both of us took Ashley to the bathroom, took care did of her. Did she say anything when she started throwing up? No, not that I recall. Never made any comments while you guys were cleaning her up and, and getting her dressed? Uh, I'm going to try to remember. I'm going to try to be honest with you, but right now I can't remember. Okay? So I'm, I'm kind of honest with you guys no, right now. No, I appreciate it. Uh, comments while she was uh, going to the bathroom. I know she said something, but usually I don't listen to that kind of stuff. So I, I kind of tune it out for me to remember that. Is it kind that. of negative? Is that what I mean? It's yes. It's negative towards Ashley? I have no idea at the point because usually at that point I just tune out. So it could have been negative. It could have been neutral, but it's definitely not positive. Sure you don't need something to drink? No. I don't want to stop. I just want to... Do you have anything else you want to add? I, I, I don't know. I mean, if you need more, definitely, you know, come ask me. I'll tell you whatever you need to know. Well, I think we covered everything. Um, okay, if you think you missed something, feel free to, you know, get in touch with me. I'll tell you whatever, whatever you need to know. Is it okay for me to ask a couple of questions or you sure. guys yeah. would be able to answer it? It's pretty much the same questions I tried to ask before. Mm -hmm. would, you, would you be able to answer that? No? Oh, okay. It's Go ahead. I don't, I don't know what, I can't read your mind. I don't know what questions you're asking. Uh, it's pretty much about the future. I know you can't tell the future, but uh, being in law enforcement, I was hoping that maybe you can answer some of these questions for me. We can try. Okay. Uh, do you know what's going to happen to my wife? I mean, I understand she's going to get locked up, but is it like a regular jail or she's going to get like, institutionalized? Well, it'll be regular jail. I mean, right it will just go to the regular jail. That has to go through court and everything. I, I think she needs some help. I, I think she needs some help. Well, that'll be, uh, that'll be between yeah. her and her attorney and... <clears throat> Okay. And the judges. That's not for us to decide. Yeah. And um, do you guys know how long I'm going to get locked up for? Approximately. I don't know. Two I, years? Three years? I don't know. Is it, are we talking like decades or years? I, I can't be honest with you. I'm not sure. We have to, we need to talk to our prosecutor and, uh, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do, do I have a choice on how do you is raised? I was mad to say that I can have her in foster care instead of uh, being raised by my parents. You don't want your family to come get her? No, I don't want her to be raised by my parents. Do you have any family close? No family at all? You want family close, but I don't want them. I'm not close to my dad. Well, I, I, the problem goes, Steve, 
Child Protective Services right now. And then that'll all be worked out later, and they will talk to you, you know. Um, there's two people that possibly, but they don't know her. They, they saw her maybe like two times since she was born. Are they relatives? My, my sisters. They're okay people, but I still don't trust them. One of them I do is that my mom is going to get so much access to her. Yeah. I don't want that. Well, then, I mean, if, if, and I'm sure CPS will talk to you about it because, you know. Because I, mean, I don't want JoJo. I mean, I know she's sick. That was right. going to be probably not going to get affected by my mom like that, but still, I don't want my mom. I know. Um, are you, do you have any intentions of hurting yourself? Um, no, I mean, I, I thought about it earlier. It's like, if I, if I can't say anything, you know, but, but I already told everything to them. So, I mean, I wanted to say it. Don't you feel, I mean, you kind of feel better, better, don't you? But I, I was thinking the same thing. Like, if I just not be able to talk, I wouldn't feel that anymore either. So you're not thinking about hurting yourself right now? Not at the moment. I swear. Yeah. And when you say not at the moment, okay, yeah. it leads me to believe that you may later. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I have to sort things out in my head. Okay. All right. Stand up on. Make sure you don't have any weapons or anything on you. <laughs> I patted him down and got a pocket knife.
you know what's happening to my wife right now? No, I haven't heard from him. Nah, I'll get it later. Just shut that light out. 